From their gigantic sizes to their powerful bites, dinosaurs are undeniable icons. However, did you know that some dinosaurs are known for their noses? Yes, their noses. Hello, my name is Brianna Gomez, class of 2024, and today I'm going to be talking to you about our dear Gryposaurus. The Gryposaurus is a hadrosaur that was discovered in what is now known as the USA and Canada. And being a hadrosaur basically means that your jaw looks like the bill of a duck. However, the specific name Gryposaurus means hooked-nosed lizard, which is fitting because the nose of this dinosaur is what sets it apart from other specimens. And this nose had many different purposes, you know, other than smelling. This nose could have helped dinosaurs tell between different species, different sexes, and maybe even to help them make different sounds. And if we get closer to the face that gave this dinosaur its name, we can look at the beak that was great at tearing away at plants and its 800 teeth. Yes, this dinosaur had nearly 800 teeth in its mouth. However, it didn't even need all of them. Scientists look at the kind of teeth that are in the mouths of dinosaurs, and upon doing this, they were able to find that in our Gryposaurus, there are some teeth that look pretty brand new, which means that they weren't even used, which is pretty insane. If we step back and get a full picture of our Gryposaurus, we can see just how big it was. The biggest Gryposaurus ever discovered was close to 27 feet long, which isn't too far off from our own Gryposaurus. When you look at the stance of this dinosaur, it might seem intuitive that it would have stood on its hind legs with its tail dragging behind it. However, this stance isn't as accurate as it could be. When paleontologists first began discovering dinosaurs, they saw them as slow, lumbering animals, kind of like zombies. However, dinosaurs were more active and agile than that. The Gryposaurus, for example, would have had a more horizontal stance, with its tail and head being more level than what is being displayed here. For example, one of the more modern mounts of this museum is the Dryosaurus, which is sporting the horizontal mount that I was speaking about, which in some ways may better represent how the Gryposaurus would have walked. Speaking of stances, let's talk about hips. Dinosaurs are distinguished into two groups depending on the shapes of their hips. Their hips are made of the pubis, ischium, and ilium. And what sets these two groups apart, which are named the Saurischians and Ornithischians, is the shape of the pubis. Our Gryposaurus is an Ornithischian, which means that its pubis extends backwards. However, in Saurischians, like a T-Rex, their pubis extends forward and down. The Gryposaurus lived in swampy areas. And these kinds of environments are ideal for preservation because the mud and water allows for complete burial, which keeps these dinosaurs safe from harsh environments and from other animals messing with them as they are being preserved and fossilized. And this environment is so ideal in terms of preservation that there have even been some skin impressions found of the Gryposaurus. And as you can see here, the Gryposaurus, which this area is specifically the back of the Gryposaurus, the Gryposaurus had scales on its skin along its back. While I could continue talking about the Gryposaurus for forever, I would like to shine a spotlight on the person who discovered our very own Gryposaurus, Charles M. Sternberg. Charles M. Sternberg actually came from a family of famous paleontologists. His brother and father were actually also extremely famous paleontologists, and their family is so famous that they even have a museum named after them, the Sternberg Museum of Natural History in Hayes, Kansas. Their family is so renowned that it's actually been stated that no scientific study done on Canadian dinosaurs can be done without citing one or another of one of Sternberg's papers. Thank you so much for listening to me talk about the Gryposaurus today, and I hope that you had a wonderful time learning about one of the great specimens at the Amherst College's Boneski Museum of Natural History.